Hey up guys, um, as you can tell, I am not in my usual bedroom recording videos. I am actually in Chester for the weekend. I'm working at some Boris Live festival thing. But I've got the mornings off, so I figure I'll use this time to be productive and give you guys some content. And I'm gonna start off by talking about this movie I saw on Wednesday nights, this new horror film called The Black Phone, which is directed by Scott Derrickson, who did I want to say Doctor Strange. Let me just check that. Doctor Strange, I was right. Don't know why I didn't trust my instincts. You should always trust your instincts. The film is set in North Denver in 1978, where a series of child abductions have taken place. Five boys have gone missing over the space of a few years. The local kids have nicknamed the kidnapper as the Grabber, and the Grabber's next victim is a 13-year-old lad called Finn, played by Mason Thames, who is abducted after school and thrown into a dank basement where the grabber kept his five previous victims. There's not much in this basement other than a mattress and a old disconnected black rotary phone on the wall. On the surface, it looks like a pretty simple child abduction horror film, but there's some supernatural elements at play in this film because the spirits of the five previous kids that were abducted and held in this basement are still present within the basement and they can contact Finn through the old broken black phone on the wall and give him advice on how to escape his and their captor. Also, Finn's feisty sister Gwen, played by a marvelous Madeline McCraw, has some sort of supernatural abilities, whether it's clairvoyance, whether she's psychic, but when she dreams, she sees and hears things which turn out to be true. So she uses her dreams as a means to help try and find her brother. The black phone was an interesting one. I had a pretty good time with it, but it's not without its faults. But let's talk positives first. For stars, I was entertained watching this film. It kept me engaged all the way through. I experienced a lot of thrills watching this film. I laughed, I shrieked, at one point I cheered, and my friend Velash, who I took to see this, there was one moment in this where there was a scare moment, and he went, God, Jesus Christ, and I was like, <laughs> So yeah, we were both emotionally invested watching this film. And Derrickson, as a director, crafts a mysterious and nerve-wracking atmosphere, and the scares were pretty decent. I would classify them as jump scares, but they weren't like, predictable jump scares, at least not all of them. And also the acting in this film was great. For me, the standouts in this film were the kids, Mason Thames and Madeline McCraw. I haven't seen either of these kids in anything before, but both these kids seriously impressed me. Madeline McCraw in particular, she's one to keep an eye out for. Her character Gwen is so likable. She's tough, but she's very warm, like with her brother. She gets to be vulnerable in this film. There was one scene where my heart was breaking for her. And she also gets most of the biggest laughs in this film. There was one line where she was like standing up to a bully and she called him like a dumb fucking fart knocker. <laughs> I was just like howling. There's also this one random character called Max, who's like this, coked up citizen trying to help find the missing kids. And he's played by James Ransom. And he did a lot with very little. He's a character that didn't really need to exist in this film, if I'm being completely honest. Like, the story would not be any different with or without him in it. But I still enjoy what James Ransom brought to the screen. As for Ethan Hawke, I will say that he does give a good performance. But his character is kind of my biggest criticism of this film. That's because... He is the grabber, he is the antagonist, but he's terribly underwritten. What are his motives? What's his backstory? Other than him considering himself to be a magician, we don't have much to go off, and the magician stuff doesn't go very far anyways, like, other than him making kids disappear. And what's the significance of his mask? Can't tell you because the script doesn't give us any answers. So yeah, Derrickson's direction is stronger here than his screenplay, which he co-wrote with C. Robert Cargill. So let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Uh, this isn't a film that I'm gonna buy a copy of and add to my collection, but I did enjoy it, like particularly the performances. Like I would rewatch this just for Madeline McCraw's performance alone. Like she is that good in it, so. Probably, yeah, I will watch it again at some point. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? I recommend The Black Phone to people that like high stakes, cat and mouse, horror thriller type movies. 
Like, if you like films like Panic Room or Ten Cloverfield Lane with, like, the atmosphere of something like The Conjuring, then this is probably a film that you're going to enjoy. It's got decent performances, a suspenseful atmosphere, and some solid scares. So, yeah, I do recommend it for those that like these types of movies. And third question, what score to give it out of 10? I would have liked more, well, anything on the grabber himself. Would have been nice to get some explanation, motives, or backstory on him. That would have made it a more compelling film. But I did come out of The Black Phone having had a pretty good time with it. So I'm going to give The Black Phone a score of 6 out of 10. But as always, guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. I would love to hear your thoughts on The Black Phone. Are you excited for this film? Have you seen it? What do you make of this film? What do you think of Madeline McCraw's performance? Whatever you have to say, let your voice be heard in that comment section down below. If you guys have enjoyed this video, help support the channel by hitting that thumbs up button. If you want more movie, TV, and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe. And if you want to follow me on any of my socials, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Letterboxd, all those links in that video description down below. I don't have any popcorn to throw at you today, guys. I guess I could throw a bag of crisps at you, something, yeah? <laughs> so yeah, for more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield. I'll see you next time.